Hello, Mrs. Mikey here. So on Monday, we talked about John F. Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy, and his speech at Rice Lake. I thought it would be fun to learn a little more about this influential person. We are still studying influential people. Do you remember what that word influential means? Someone who does something important that affects other people, right? Usually and hopefully in a good way. And John F. Kennedy was one of those people. So we are going to read a little more about John F. Kennedy. Remember, as we're reading this, I want you to be able to tell me, is this a historical fiction? Remember, fiction, fake. Or is this a biography with just true facts? Historical fiction, little bit of fake. Biography, all true. Okay, let's read Debbie and Billy, John Kennedy's Hamsters. Yes, you heard me correct. We are reading about their pet. John F. Kennedy was the 35th president of the United States. He was much younger than most presidents. His children, Caroline and John, were young also. They had many pets. President Kennedy's wife, Jacqueline, grew up with animals. She was an excellent horse rider. She taught Caroline and John to ride as soon as they could walk. Caroline's pony was named Macaroni. Okay. Who can tell me what that is an example of? Caroline's pony was named Macaroni. You guessed it, that is rhyming. Caroline won a blue ribbon while riding Macaroni when she was five years old. Background knowledge, if you don't already know, a blue ribbon is an award that you can win. Now, John's pony was a leprechaun. That was his name. <laughs> he learned to ride before he was two. President and Mrs. Kennedy taught the children to take care of their ponies. The children washed and brushed them. They even cleaned their stables. Once, Macaroni trotted past Kennedy's office the president's window was wide open and Macaroni stuck his head right inside. Yes, he did. Okay, let's look at what we have already learned. Now remember, our five finger retell helps us tell a summary of the story. So let's start at the beginning. Do we know the setting? Where does this story take place? In the United States, yes, because he was the 35th president. Okay, who are we talking about? Who are the characters? JFK, John F. Kennedy was one of our characters. His children, Carolyn and John, those are two of our characters. And his wife, Jacqueline, she is one of our characters. Who are some other important characters in this story? I'll give you a hint. They have more than two legs. Look back in the story. What do you think? Look at the pictures for clues. Yes, the horse Macaroni. Caroline's Pony Macaroni. 
and John had a pony named Leprechaun. Those are two of the animals that we have met so far. Now, I want you to take a look at this paragraph down here. It says, President and Mrs. Kennedy taught the children to take care of their ponies. The children washed and brushed them. They even cleaned their stables. I have a question for you. Do you think it is a good idea to have your children take care of their pets? Should kids take care of their pets? Yes, that shows that they are responsible. That shows that they are responsible. So this paragraph in our story teaches us a little bit about John F. Kennedy's personality, right? That tells us about how he was as a person. Is this still true? Is this based on fact? So far, so good. So far, so good. Now, at the bottom of this page, we have been talking about anecdotes, right? This is an example of a short anecdote in a story. Once Macaroni, that's the horse, trotted past Kennedy's office. Remember, he's the president of the United States. So we are talking about the Oval Office, not just any office. So the horse is walking outside the White House, walks past the Oval Office, and the windows are open. And what does that silly horse do? Macaroni stuck his head right through the window into the Oval Office. <laughs> that is a perfect example of a short anecdote. Kind of makes you giggle, but tells you a little bit about our character, and in this case, our true historical person, a little bit about their personality and their life. The president laughed when Macaroni stuck her head right through that window, but he went right back to work. Soon, Macaroni became bored and walked away. The ponies were just two of the Kennedy's White House pets. Tom Kitten and Mother Cat lived there. They stayed outside because the hair made the president sneeze. Did we just learn something about President John F. Kennedy? Why did he sneeze? What made him sneeze? I'll read it again. The ponies were just two of the Kennedy's White House pets. Tom Kitten and Mother Cat lived there too. They stayed outside because their hair made the president sneeze. Why did he sneeze? What made him sneeze? Do you think he's allergic to the cats? We learned another fact about President John F. Kennedy. Now, Dogs, oh, they had dogs too. Dogs, Charlie, Clipper, Shannon, Pushnika, and Wolf ran around the White House. Charlie and Push Pushnika had four puppies. The White House already had too many animals, so the puppies were given away to good homes. <laughs> rabbit, Zaja, yes, they had a rabbit. They had a rabbit too. Are you guys counting? Have we counted the pets? We had that macaroni, we had leprechaun the horse, right? We had Tom Kitten, Mother Cat, they lived outside though, and then Charlie and Clipper and Shannon and Pushinka and Wolf. Okay, wait, and now we're adding rabbit, Zaza. Whoop, whoa, whoa, okay, we're at like 10. Wait, oh my goodness, look at this. So did three birds, they had three birds too. They were Robin the Canary and Parakeet and Bluebell and Maybell. Oh my goodness. Once a visitor to the White House learned how, um, how much Carolyn liked the movie Bambi. 
So he sent her two deer. Can you believe that? Somebody sent her a deer. So yes, now she has pet deer. <laughs> President Kennedy let the deer stay. They lived outside on the lawn, but they began to eat the flowers and the bushes. So Kennedy gave them to the zoo. Of all the Kennedy pets, Debbie and Billy became the best known. Those two hamsters got into all kinds of trouble. Let's find out what they did. They always found ways to get out of their cage. Oh yeah, in the White House. Newspaper reporters loved writing stories about them. Yes, they wrote stories about John F. Kennedy's hamsters running around the White House. Would you have read that story? Do you think this really happened? It kind of sounds like it would be make-believe, right? Could you really imagine two hamsters running around the White House? That sounds made up, but guess what? It is a true fact. It is, it is 100% a true fact. Billy and Debbie were two hamsters of President John F. Kennedy's kids. And yes, they used to get out of their cage and run around the White House. It's true. <laughs> The hamsters often got lost. The White House had many places for them to hide. Debbie and Billy popped up in funny places. They could be behind a curtain or in someone's shoe. They made nests and had babies in cozy places. Sometimes the hamsters got sick. Once a newspaper printed a story when Billy had a cold. He had fallen into a bathtub full of water Poor Willie was not used to being wet. He sneezed and coughed for days. Billy and Debbie fought with each other, just like some brothers and sisters. When reporters asked about the hamsters, Kennedy would just shake his head and laugh. <laughs> hamsters did not live for long. By the time Lyndon Johnson became president, Billy and Debbie had passed away. Some of Billy and Debbie's children probably moved out with the Kennedys. But who knows? Some might have stayed hidden in the White House. There could be Billy and Debbie baby hamsters living in the White House still. Oh, isn't that cool? Okay, time for you to tell me the big answer. Did we read? A historical fiction, fiction is fake, or did we read a biography, which is information that is all true about our historical character? Uh-huh, what do you think? Was this story based on a real person? Yes. President John F. Kennedy was real. Was his family real? Yes. Were his pets real? Yes. The silly things they did, were those real? Yes, and how do we know that is true? Because the reporters in the White House actually wrote newspaper articles about it. So we have factual proof that these stories did happen. So if they're all true, what does that make this story? A part of John F. Kennedy's historical fiction or a part of John F. Kennedy's biography? What do you think? If you said biography, you were totally right. Yes, these facts, while they seem really weird, like they could not happen, they actually did happen. 
this is factually true and it would be part of a biography for John F. Kennedy. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about one of our influential people in history. Remember to keep reading. I'm sure there's tons more books out there on JFK if you want to learn more. I'll see you in class soon. Bye.